About a week or so ago now, Unify came out with Unify OS server for MSP. This is their self-hosted network controller, but part of their OS lineup, like you would get on a UDM Pro, or if you've got one of those devices that contains the Unify OS suite. So I'm about to install this on my own hardware. I've got a server over here that I need to install it on. So I thought I would take you through the journey of how I did it and how I'm gonna migrate my entire site from the old controller to the new one. I am installing this on a different server, though I don't know what happens if you install it on the same. I'm doing that because I need it on a newer version of Ubuntu. So let me show you what we're gonna do. So here, as you can see, I've got the Unify OS server. So this is the Unify OS server, it allows you to run the full Unify OS experience on their own Windows, Mac, Linux. Personally, I would suggest that Linux is the way to go, especially if you're self-hosting this for more than just yourself, if you've got multiple sites or whatever, the Windows and Mac versions will be slightly slower, I would imagine. Linux is the way to go. So this is the full Unify OS experience built on Unify OS Foundation. So my guess for that meaning that the network controller that you currently have that you install that's all written in Java, my guess is that they're going to deprecate that at some point and they've got a whole back-end platform upgrade coming that isn't going to be supported. So this says it's going to require a minimum of 20 gigs of storage. Oof, a lot of storage requirement there. Um, we've got to install Podman if we're doing this on Linux, so it's actually part of Podman. So Podman is a similar Docker containerization sort of thing. So clearly it's not actually running on the system itself, it's running in a container. So let's jump into how we install this. So down here, so just check what version of Ubuntu you've got installed, and then we're going to install Podman. So Podman, as I said earlier, is the Docker container equivalent. This is clearly what they've chosen to use. So I'm just going to run that now. And as you can see, it's going to say, it's going to install 135 megabytes of stuff, so we'll come back when that's done. Okay, that has been successfully installed. Now we need to download the Unify OS server installation. As you can see, there are multiple options. We are on Linux and I'm on x86, so I'm just going to copy the link for that. Go back over here and go wget, and then the file. This will download the file. As you can see, it's doing it pretty quickly, so hopefully that'll be done. Then we just need to run that file. Before we can run the file, we need to make it executable with chmod plus x, followed by the file name. So if you just type 8 and then tab, it'll do that. Now we need to run that file with dot slash 8b tab, and then the word install. You're about to install Unify OS Server 4.2.23. Proceed. Yes. Adding Unify OS Server user and group. Okay. It's doing some stuff. It's adding some configuration. Something to do with... Mac VLAN and containerization. So this is clearly to do with its containerization features. It's also loading a container image. My guess is most of the config will run in the container and only certain parts will actually be accessible and it's just writing config parameters to the system. I'll come back when this is done or if there's anything interesting happening while this happens. Okay, so this seems to have completed now. You can see here it's got some installation completion steps. Very interestingly enough, if you look up here at this command, this is actually running the container and it appears to be mapping some of the local files to the container as well as some of the API endpoints. That might be a bit more interesting when we get into things later on. But down here anyway, grant permissions for the user to run. So if you want a user on the system to be able to run commands as the Unify OS server, you have to add this. So I'm just going to run this and then followed by the user server. That's the name of the user. And it seems to have done that. Okay, perfect. That seems to be it. It says USG server is running at this IP address. So let's go have a look. Let's go take a look. So I've just loaded it up in a call. So I'm going to get the standard, not private. So I'm going to go to advanced, continue. And now we're in Unify OS server. Wait approximately one to two minutes while the Unify OS server prepares an update. I'll come back when this is finished. Okay, so this appears to have finished now. It's on a setup screen. So I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it TDS Unify server. And we're going to hit next and we're going to immediately see what happens. I've got to log in with my account. I'll jump back in a minute. So I'm now logged in with my account. I'm now at a restore from backup page and it says select your Unify console. I don't have one. Because of the existing Unify system I'm using, which is the network controller, I don't even think that's connected to my account. It's definitely not storing my backup on their system. So it says select the configuration backup file to create a restore for the Unify OS server or upload one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up as a new system and then we're going to transfer it across. Continue without backup. Configuring Unify OS server. So now the setup has been completed. If I click go to dashboard, 
I'm assuming this will take me to the network dashboard, which it has. It's taken me here. I've got no sites set up at the moment. So let's go and look at how we set up a site. So to copy your old sites from your old configuration. So I've got my old site here. I'm going to select one of the sites. So we're going to do my house. I'm going to go down here to settings, to system backups and downloads. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and download the most recent. I'm just going to download that now. Hopefully that won't take too long. And then we can just upload that to the new system and it should just work perfectly. So that download has finished. And now if I go over to the new system and I go restore, I select that download from the download options and it just uploads. So hopefully this won't take too long, probably like a minute or so, depending on the size and the retention of your data. But once that's done, it will transfer all of your sites, all of your information and all of your config over to the new system. And as you can see now, it says restore backup. A restart is required to complete the restore. Click restore and it should just do that. It's going to restart and everything should hopefully work. While I wait for this to do its restore and updating system, it's just stopped right now. I thought I'd tell you a bit about Unify OS Server and why they've done it. So if you've got a Unify device with Unify OS on it, which is one of the UDMs or stuff like that, you can install all of their applications on it. This currently only supports network and interspace. This is an application that allows you to map out your house and put where your access points are, all that sort of stuff. And to be fair, it is really good. I use it over on my Protect system. It'd be nice if I could get the two to link up. I think it's good that they are making the transition to bring Unify OS to non-Unify consoles. Because right now, using them is a bit all over the place. They can support some of the features that some of the UDMs support, and they don't support some of the others. Like, now this will add site magic and some of those features. Because I think, realistically, the back end of Unify networking is actually written in a different layer. I haven't tested that, but I'm going to have a look at some point after this video, have a bit of a deep dive into the code, see what's going on there. My guess is, like on the um, Protect application, it's running um, It's running in JavaScript on Node. Um, this works quite well. It means it's quite productive and speed-wise. So that's what I'm guessing they're using here. I imagine OS is definitely written in that. But overall, I think this is a massive improvement, especially for updates and stuff like that, keeping it consistent. It appears to have just finished its install, so it's now updated and I've got all my options back. Let's jump over to the main house and see if it's working okay. So as you can see now, it appears to be up. That's good going, good. I think that's kind of a wrap for this video, showing you how to install Unify um, OS, their new MSP product. Hopefully, I'll try it out and we'll see what it's like and I'll give you a bit more of an in-depth tutorial talking about some of the things I like and some of the things I don't like once I've used it for maybe more than a week. So if you want to see that, make sure you get subscribed and go watch another video. I just hacked the screen on the Unify products, you know, the LCD, got some remote commands working there. I do all sorts of other networking stuff. There's a load of videos about some Unify cameras I just installed. Go watch something on my channel if you enjoyed this one. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.